you know, I think every kid kind of absorbs family history by osmosis. No one ever said, hey, we're Holocaust survivors, for example. It was just in there. I don't remember anyone telling me. Um, and it wasn't like I put two and two together and, oh, they're X number of years old and they're all from Poland. I never thought of that. We just knew. But by the time I was around, they didn't really want to talk about it. And I'm not sure they ever did, although my mom says that occasionally when they were kids, they used to ambush them with it. Like they'd be driving, you know, pulling out of the gas station in New Jersey or something, and suddenly my grandfather would say some awful thing about the past. But uh, when it came time for me to start being interested, actually I was really obsessed with World War II for a long time before I even really asked them very much. Um, and I never really told them how interested I was in the war in general. And it wasn't only the Holocaust I was interested in, it was so many other things. Always civilian matters. I was interested in, in um, the Pacific also, just in the effects on, on civilians. That's something that's always interested me. But I was really also obsessed with the Holocaust and I didn't really want to bring it up with them because I didn't want to cause them any pain. There were things I started to realize as an adult. You know, I was like, I was 32 when my grandmother died and 33 when my grandfather died. So I had them for a long time. I was able to be a conscious adult with them, which was nice. There were times though, in, as an adult, that I would ask them. Um, my grandfather was a little more forthcoming and sometimes he would just let stuff drop. You know, you could tell like it was a job for him to talk about it, but it wasn't, it didn't seem like it was traumatizing to him. And he would just kind of like offhandedly sometimes he'd say stuff. I said something to him once about how the government of Poland had apologized for a pogrom that happened after the war, and he said, <laughs> he just pickle halfway to his mouth, and he goes, Poland, Poland should drop dead. Okay. <laughs> uh, and come to think of it, I think I only heard them speaking Polish once even though they were native speakers of it. But it was a Polish farmer who kept them safe and hid them and was his friend. And then I know some other stories from, you know, fragmentary stories from my mother, some from a cousin. My grandmother was completely locked down. Uh, in retrospect, there are some things that I saw, like, okay, so when I was a kid, there was this really trashy miniseries called V. These aliens who look exactly like us and speak our languages and are really nice come to earth and everybody's super psyched and you know but quickly things start to kind of go a little weird right there's some people who are suspicious it turns out these aliens are just dressed like humans they're actually lizards so there's a scene in this show where um, there's a lot of gunfire and I don't remember if it was a raid or what but you know, I was a dumb, selfish nine-year-old, and I wanted to watch this show, and my grandmother was very indulgent of me, and she was like, yeah, sure, watch your show, and we're all sitting in the living room, and the scene starts with the gunfire, and my grandmother starts to freak out. And what I now realize is a PTSD reaction, because I know what they're like. I have them myself. So, I didn't get it. I'm, I hope I shut the TV off. I don't remember. Probably. If she asked me to, I probably did. I hope I didn't argue with her. But now I understand, because... Okay, so I know like one or two stories about my grandmother, and one of them is that she witnessed the liquidation of her ghetto from the synagogue where she was hiding. I think she was in the attic. It was 950 people in the graveyard of the synagogue. So no wonder she was having a flashback. The poor woman. You know, most of the time she just really wanted to watch wrestling and soap operas and game shows and be my grandmother and putter around, you know, and she had this horrible stuff she was carrying around inside her. Another time, when I was a teenager, uh, my mother had this beautiful shawl. It's made out of this Egyptian fabric called a suit it, that's named for the town that it comes from in Egypt. So any dancer knows what a suit is, and it's very difficult to find vintage a suit. It's, it's this kind of tool with these patterns made of metal that's hammered into it. Uh, and vintage a suit is very heavy and well made. And so my mom had this beautiful a suit shawl from the 1920s. And she was kind of throwing it around her neck one day, and my grandmother said, oh, my mother had a scarf just like that, and she was wearing it the day they took her away. And I didn't see that shawl again until last year. More than 20 years. 
my mom gave it to me because I told her it was Egyptian and antique. Uh, and I guess she didn't want any part of it. <laughs>